In the last video, I have determined that we need to do some piston rings in this engine. I don't know what you guys have responded because I filmed this before the video is even uploaded, but we're going to start the teardown today. The first thing we're going to do is to remove the engine from the frame and then start tearing it down for the rebuild. We have the engine off the frame now. Basically what I want to do first is inspect the cylinder and that can be done by we're going to move the exhaust, we're going to remove all the carburetor shit, remove this housing here, and it looks like there's four bolts in total, and then the cylinder head should just pull off. And that's going to save us a lot of hassle because that's going to tell us whether or not this is worth it or not. So let's get started. That gas is no good, so we'll drain it off. Well, I did get the gas tank off because I need to get rid of that old fuel because it's useless. But you can see, I don't know, hopefully the camera can pick it up. The intake valve actually looks really nice in there. So our next step is that we're going to re-remove these four bolts to the valve cover. And then we're going to remove those two bolts. There'll be two more in there, and then that head should just come off. Well, here goes nothing. This is what we're up to right now. The cylinder head does not look too bad. I mean, if you wanted to, you could probably put new valves in, but they're pretty good. However, the problem is, I didn't see it with the uh, boroscope. Let me get my light here. We're going to shine it inside, get some clear. Now do you see that dark section on the bottom of the cylinder there? That is the plating that has flaked off. So basically, that cylinder will need to get either bored out and replate it, or replace the whole block. Now there's a couple options we can look at. Um, you can get a new block off eBay with shipping for under 100 bucks. And then a piston and rings for like another thirty, thirty-five dollars, and uh, we could rebuild this engine. So it's something to think about. But we're going to continue to tear it down, see what other kind of chaos and mess that we can find. So we're going to continue stripping down this engine, remove this, the pulley, the outer casing, disconnect some of the wiring, and see what kind of gremlins we find. along a lot of things are pretty basic we need to pull the flywheel off now and I'm gonna have to use a big puller for that because I don't see anything that would could be used as a jacking point but you need to remove this shield first which is fits right there and all you do is you align this notch it goes in there you can get a socket in there so now I'm gonna hook up my gear puller and see if we can get this off. All right, the three drop puller wouldn't quite grasp. I'm having issues getting the puller to get around the flywheel here, even with using this end here. So it's set up so I could use as a two drop puller. And let's hope for the best. Let's see how seized this thing is. That came off pretty easy. Well, actually, this is coming along pretty fast these engines are pretty simple so the flywheel came off now we're just gonna split this case pull that off pull the piston out got these two little pry bars maybe I can pry them both at the same time there we go okay now we're ready to start pulling the engine apart. Now there's some timing marks right there. We don't have to worry about those for right now. But we're going to remove the camshaft. And I guess the lifters. Well they're sort of lifters. And then we'll proceed to remove 
the bolts for the connecting rod, then pull the piston out, and then we'll start stripping everything else down. Now the camshaft might be a little tricky to get out, but you should be able just to lift it, pull it out. We're going to wrap it in a towel here. And now we need to remove these somewhat lifters, and you just reach inside, pull them out. Now I rotated the crankshaft so it's in this position here, so it should be easier to get those bolts out. Use a 10 mil wrench. So we're going to pull those out and then split this and then pull the piston out through the top. Just going to remove the last bolt and there this comes off. Now the piston hopefully should break free. There we go. And we're going to slide it out through the top here, just like that. So now that we got the connecting rod and piston out, the crankshaft should just pull straight out, just like that. Now we need to be careful with it, so we don't drop well, it or the anything. The piston's in good shape. I mean, there's no major scoring, uh, no flaking. So that's pretty good. Crankshaft, same thing, good condition. This in the cylinder is actually just a sleeve, um, so I'm probably going to save this block. You know, I might. It may come in handy in the future. I haven't been able to find a sleeve for it, but I haven't looked that hard. So basically, the only thing that's left to do to this engine is pull the oil sending out and the electrical connection on the outside. This is the governor, and yeah, I guess we'll be finishing up here. So it's kind of a weird setup. Once you pull this nut off, you'll be able to pull that oil sending unit out. It's kind of bizarre how this works, but you want to be careful too. Pull that out now. That just pulls through, and there, Bob's your uncle. How about that? Now this governor's got a little, I don't know, kind of like a little clip. If I push this up. Pull that clip out. I should be able to reach inside. There we go. That's out. Alright, now is the fun part. Now we need to spread this open like that. Pull this out. There's going to be a washer on the bottom too, so be careful. Now there's a little clip in there that's holding this in. So we need to kind of get in there somehow. Heck, I'm gonna do it without breaking it, but we gotta try to get that out because we gotta reuse this. You're probably not gonna be able to see too well, but there's a little tiny clip. And what I did was I gently went over this, lift a little bit, lift it a little bit. Then once I kind of got an edge underneath, I was taking my pick and then it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you kind of get the idea is just keep prying it up and then we're almost ready to yank this yeah, taking off. Taking that pin out too because I'm probably going to need it to transfer over to the new motor. It's a pin for the governor. So I'm just going to use a punch finish punching it out. Perfect. Now let's get the seal out because I need to get that bearing out too. by pounding out like I did is totally the wrong way because you're not supposed to hit on the inside race you're supposed to actually if you have to get it in is to use both faces but I was gonna heat up the case and then try to tap it out but it came out pretty easy and it still rolls pretty smooth so I don't think the bearing is been held but even if it is it's not that hard to change out anyways well that finishes the teardown on the Honda GX160. The principle should be the same for the GX120. I think there's a GX200. Pretty much the whole Honda commercial line engines that are that style should all be the same or similar. Anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.